Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Monday just after lunchtime here in Australia, and look how the market has rebounded quite nicely. So now we are at that $2.9 trillion mark, up 3.2%. 3 Bitcoin dominance risen ever so slightly. Plenty of volume coming in, which is nice. Bitcoin has broken out of that pendant uh, and 65,000 and rising. Look, gas prices rising as well because Ethereum's rising along with Bitcoin. So they're both starting to make moves. Uh, Ethereum getting oh so close to that $5,000 mark now. Uh, and Bitcoin looking quite nice. I mean, look, it's, you know, plenty of green there. Still some reds as well. There's always, you know, uh, a little bit of red somewhere in the market and vice versa where when there's usually a whole lot of uh, red in the market, there's probably some green somewhere. Uh, that is generally the way the market kind of plays. So look, what's performed the best in the last 24 hours? Because Bitcoin's looking quite nice at 5%. Loopring, 24%. KuCoin, 16%. Stacks, something I bought and sold, doubled my money. I wish I had stayed in it, but you know, what can you do? You never get it all right. 13%. Helium making a move. OKB, Kasama, all double digit gains. And look, ICP out of nowhere, uh, just under a 10% gain and look XRP right up there that was a dollar 27 earlier so making a nice move as well so plenty of green which is to be expected when the market is up 3.2% what about losses though what's not performing so well well all the coins basically that were pumping in the last few days so our weave engine OMG Chili San Cadena uh, Raven coin Cadena has been pumping uh, ridiculously over the last week. Now, SHIB's been on a downward spiral for a while. That's just what happens when something pumps as hard as SHIB does. But that doesn't mean that SHIB's, you know, all over for. Uh, it just means it has to have a retracement because it pumps so hard. But again, a majority of these coins that you see down now, they were pumping 24 to 48 hours ago outside of SHIB. That's been on its on a downward uh, sort of movement for almost a sort of week now. But again, it pumped really hard not so long ago so the gains quite nice the losses fairly minimal again seven percent in 24 hours considering where engine was not that long ago because it was trading in the two dollar range not that long ago and now it's above the three dollar mark so as i've said before you know if you pump up let's just say ten percent you're probably going to lose somewhere from three to maybe six percent of that before it then starts to make its way back up. It's not just constantly up. When things are really starting to skyrocket like Shiba Inu, that's usually your clue that it might be a good time to take profits because it's just pumped too hard for too long. And then you have some fairly hefty retracements. And all these other coins really, they haven't pumped like that, but they were pumping in the last 24 to 48 hours. So now they're going to cool off and wait for the next move up. All right, the Bitcoin chart, very interesting. Here we can see we had the breakout. Look at that. This was that pennant that was forming, and I put this little uh, line in here. And again, this is how you work out a pennant. It's when you've got this or a bull flag, whatever you want to call it. All you do is take a line from the bottom of where the move started to where it topped out. And once you've done that, then you just got to grab this little line here and take it over to where you think it's going to break out. And it was around about there. And so at the moment, it's looking like Bitcoin should be heading towards the $88,000 mark. Now, there's no guarantees in life. Just because you put some lines on a, <laughs> on a chart doesn't mean it's going to happen. But quite often, that's how this plays out. It won't simply be straight up there to it. It's probably going to be some volatility. But most people would be expecting Bitcoin to get to around about the $88,000 level in the not too distant future. How long that will take? That's the next question. And like I said, I'm not going to be surprised if we have a retracement somewhere between 70 and 85,000. Now, originally I was thinking we could possibly come back down into these levels here. I just, I don't think that's going to happen. Possible, but I'm thinking it's now more likely that we're probably going to retrace to down around about here. I think there's a lot of support now around that kind of 61,000, $60,000 level in here. So any heavy retracement we have, and maybe it's before 88,000, maybe it's up at around about 100,000, I think we're probably going to come down to around about 60,000. Now, the only way I see it going below 60,000 and definitely below sort of that $50,000 mark is if once we get up to wherever it is, again, maybe 100,000 and we go into a true bear market. 
then we're definitely going to go below. Well, not definitely. I don't give you financial advice, but I think 60,000 uh, will not be the low. If 100,000 is the high, we're probably going down into the teens. I'd say sort of 12 to 15,000, maybe even sort of, yeah, 12 to 15 actually. I think that's where the uh, cycle low would be. But that's based on, you know, sort of 100,000-ish, maybe even again 88,000, 90,000 being the top. I think you could definitely see Bitcoin down into maybe even lower than 10K. Maybe we've got to come back down to sort of 5K. Who knows? Just things to keep in mind. I'm never offering you financial advice. Just my personal opinion. But here's some very interesting information from TechDev over on Twitter. So he's mapped out these bull cycles. Now look at this. Usually Bitcoin in a bull cycle will come back down and retest the 1.272 mark. Did it in 2013, did it 2017, look what we've done in 2021. Then once it finally breaks above 1.618, it goes on these parabolic moves. Now again, look, it made it to 1.618 here, had a retracement, but then when it really did properly break out, again, another big boom. Now look at this, it's usually made it to the 2.272 fib, uh, fib level. This time it only wicked up there. This time it was actually a daily candle that went above there. And now have a look where we are in comparison to where Bitcoin could go. Now again, there's no guarantees in life that it will play out exactly the same. Because this isn't exactly the same as this, and this isn't exactly the same as that, and this isn't exactly the same as that. They are very different. You can see this was didn't really make it up to this kind of... Uh, 1.61 level there was a wick uh, this one didn't even make it up there before it retraced and then its retracement was really heavy and this one it bounced off at two times and actually came up to this uh, 1.618 level well actually not quite but it did wick above so they will most likely be similar but they won't be exactly the same so just remember that so don't kind of go rightio well I'm setting my sell order for Bitcoin just under here because there's no guarantees that it's going to make it. There's a lot of people looking at these charts and everyone's thinking the same thing. But what you also need to remember is it went well above this. Now, it was only a wick in that one, but went well above. In this one, it went well above with a candle close. I mean, the wick went even higher. So there is no guarantees that Bitcoin, number one, gets to 2.272 on the FIB level let alone doesn't go past it. We looked at that article from Plan B saying we could get a hyper parabolic sort of move from Bitcoin where it goes to 300 to 500,000. And that's obviously well above the 2.272 level on the FIB. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, again, you know, BitBoy said he doesn't see Bitcoin going much over $100,000. He thinks maybe to 130. A lot of other people are saying sort of 150 to 200. Plan B says, you know, his stock to flow Model X gets it to 288,000, you know, possibly even higher. So there's a lot of different people giving quite a large variety of where it might go. You've got to work out what's right for you. For me, Bitcoin... If it's not really a hundred and fifty-ish thousand dollars, I really don't plan on selling any. I bought it so cheap. I'll just continue to buy it when it uh, starts to dip again. Other than you know throwing in a few dollars here and there, I constantly sort of DCA into it. But I reduce the amount I'm DCing, DCAing into Bitcoin until I see a really heavy retracement. And when that will happen, who knows? But very very interesting that this is where we are around that sixty thousand dollar level. And if history is going to play out again then we're coming up to around this level 2.272 which has it at nearly two hundred thousand dollars now i can't tell you exactly when it's going to happen that's a different story and i just don't know if we're going to see these big parabolic rises up like that i think we could have a again i'm i'm fairly certain we're going to probably get somewhere around about there my sort of take is I don't know how much above sort of 150,000 we go. I'm not even sure we can really get above 100,000. There's a distinct possibility we don't. But for me, that is quite a move. All right, moving on. It's not all good news though. So Stan Druckenmiller has come out and said he thinks we are in a bubble in basically everything at the moment. It's the literally everything bubble. And I'd have to tend to agree. Food prices through the roof. 
fuel prices through the roof, car prices, brand new or second hand through the roof, property prices through the roof, crypto, the highest it's ever been, stocks, the highest they've ever been. <sighs> it's concerning. Now, just because things are in a bubble doesn't mean they have to go pop right now. We could be, you know, if a bubble uh, had levels in it, we could be at the lower part of the bubble and we really need to get up to the top before it can pop. Uh, you know, who knows? But it is something to just keep in mind that things are quite, as I said the other day, frothy at the moment and they could turn on a dime. So just make sure you're prepared. And again, if you've done your research and understand crypto, it just means you might have to hold for four years before you're back in profit. As long as you're in good projects. If you're not, well, I hope you've taken some good profits and uh, are one of the 4% of the Americans that have quit their job <laughs> because they made so much money in crypto and congratulations to them. All right, DeFi, something that's been a little bit quiet for a while, but it's actually been growing nonstop. $105 billion locked up in DeFi at the moment. And this is just on Ethereum. This is only looking at Ethereum. It's not looking at things like uh, AVAX, Terra Luna, Solana and things like that. So that's actually higher. But look at that. It just continues to grow. It'll have a big peak. It'll have a trough. It'll have a peak. It'll have a trough. And now look at it. It just continues to grow. Now a project that has got a lot of sort of FUD and even I got caught up in it. Synthetic this network. Now it's down here at number 12, but there's still nearly $2 billion locked up in it and it's starting to grow 7% upwards. And when you go to derivatives, look, it is the number one. There's nothing that really comes sort of too close to it. We've got DYDX, that's about half of it though, a little bit more than half, but you know, let's round it uh, down and we'll round that up around about half. But synthetics is still right uh, at the very top by sort of some distance. Now, again, the regulatory FUD is that, you know, the SEC and that are going to come after it because it's, you know, dealing with derivatives and things like that. But Kane Warwick, he's the guy who created it. He's been in the States. He was in the States for a few days at least. And as far as I know, he wasn't served by the SEC. Now, that doesn't automatically mean that nothing's going to happen to Synthetics Network, but it's just been around for a long time and it is getting more and more decentralized. So what I want to do is have a look at Synthetics. This is my kind of dark horse. This is the one that, you know, I sold a little bit of it when I started to fall for the FUD, but it literally was, it was less than a quarter. I think it'd be probably maybe 15% if that, probably more like 10% of my Synthetics I sold. And then I simply just held. But look at this. It's been traveling at around about $10 for quite some time. Now, it's got quite a bit higher. It's got quite a bit lower. But look at this. The volatility on the dollar level seems to be getting to, I don't know. It's just very, very interesting. It is so quiet at the moment. There's hardly any volatility. And usually when the volatility kind of dies off, other than if it gets to zero, and it's not getting to zero, it's getting to around about $10, something's about to pop. It could be to the downside. I'm not saying it's to the upside. I never give you financial advice, but this is very, very interesting. Now we have a look at it compared to Ethereum. Same thing. It had these big, massive spikes, and it's been coming down and coming down, and it's still on its way down a little bit, but look at the volatility. It is minimal. And now look where it is. It's also sitting at around about a level of old kind of resistance and support. Now, it definitely could come lower. Maybe it's got to come down to here. Who knows? But it just the volatility is so small and at the moment, I get the feeling like it's going to get ready to make a fairly big move. Again, never financial advice, just something I'm seeing in the charts. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. What are we seeing here? Something similar. Look at this. The volatility at the moment is just minimal. It just It's almost, it looks like nothing's happening now again. It looked like this here and then it had this big drop. So this absolutely could be coming down even further. I'm not saying that it's not going to be a big move to the downside, but I just get the feeling like a big move is coming for synthetics. I'm just hoping it's to the upside, not to the downside. But here's something I want you to keep in mind. Again, a lot of people got fudded out by synthetics and all the regulatory FUD, which still could happen. You know, the regulators could really come and crack down on synthetics. So far, they haven't. 
this is the synthetics network sort of home page you come here and you stake your synthetics and what happens is if synthetics does well goes up in value you'll get susd plus some synthetics tokens that you have to wait for a year to claim but the usd the susd sorry you get straight away so synthetics going up you're getting more and more susd if it goes down you've got to make sure you got the susd to pay for that balance but you can also take this susd and then you come over and uh, can use it on Quenta and you can buy things like SBTC, SETH uh, and S-Link. So that is a synthetic Bitcoin, a synthetic Ethereum and a synthetic Chainlink. And so you put the SUSD into that and then if they start to do well, you're increasing your uh, SUSD value uh, because it's going up in comparison with the SBTC. I mean... You're increasing your SBTC or SETH, whatever you're in, but you can then convert it back to SUSD. You can also take your SUSD, come over to the Lyra platform uh, and do like options trading and things like that. You can also come over to the Thales and do something very, very similar. Now, what's good about synthetics is as a staker of synthetics, now, I don't know if you'll be able to get uh, all of these anymore because it's for people who have been staking, but you'll have to go and check. You get a free token drop for Thales. You get a free token drop for Quinta. You get a free token drop for Lyra. And another project that's coming through uh, with Kane Warwick is Alien. So this, uh, when I was reading, there's only 5,000 coins in total going to come from Alien. And it's about helping get into projects nice and early. So it's a, not quite like a vc program but it is somewhat similar but it is a decentralized sort of vc program and again anyone who's staking on synthetics is most likely going to get some of this alien drop from uh sorry not alien alien i don't even know how they say it it does look like a little bit like alien a little bit but this is one of the reasons why i am glad that i've stuck with synthetics because the token drops have been quite nice they have their own value they are a completely separate program so they have their own DAOs and things like that but it's just interesting to see where synthetics is going even through all the regulatory fud and everything they continue to grow you know there's different platforms branching off so you can take your susd or uh yeah the susd again you know put it into options going long going short and things like that and sales and again over at lyra finance can be part of an uh automated market maker and things like that and again quinta trading into different kind of synthetic uh, options and things like that so i thought i'd just give you an update so synthetics it's still my dark horse i'm not selling look if it goes to zero it goes to zero that's just going to be that i got it at a really cheap price and i didn't put you know tens of thousands of dollars into it so you know it will be what it'll be but this is a project that i'm still bullish on i'm still sticking with I really like what Kane Warwick has done with all these other, you know, projects that have kind of branched off. Uh, you know, he helped with Alluvium. And again, now this, uh, I think it's Alien. I don't know how to say it. I'm just going to call it Alien. Alien protocol that's coming out. This is my dark horse. This is one I would keep an eye out for. I'm not telling you to buy it. I'm just saying I'm keeping an eye on it and I'm writing this until, again, it either dies or goes to the moon, whichever one happens. All right, that's it for me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. You should all be on that game train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good and I'll see you next time.